Hi, I'm Lynn Hardy, and I'm here today with the living word. We know that the word is active, that it's living, that it's sharper than a two-edged sword, according to 1 um, Peter 1, chapter, uh, or chapter 1, verse 23. And today, I'm bringing you a message that is the strong stuff from the word of God. This is part of the free classes at the online Christian church. It is the class number two called Identifying the Enemy. This is part three, and it's spiritual influence on stuff. As I said, this is the deeper level. So today we're going to continue talking about identifying the enemy, and we're we're talking about how the enemy can be on things, on items, and they can influence the area around us. So let's go ahead and begin today. I'm going to pause just a moment after the setup. I just need a, a little quick prayer here. Lord Jesus, we just thank you for being with us. We ask that you have your way in this meeting today. Let your be well, your will be done and not our own. We submit ourselves unto you, Jesus. Bring forth wisdom from heaven, not man's wisdom, but yours. We give you complete control over this meeting. We ask, Lord, keep us on the narrow path. In your name, amen. Okay, as I said, this is Identifying the Enemy, part three, and it is spiritual influences upon items or upon stuff. For many years, I thought the two basic ways to discern good and evil, which we have already talked about earlier in this free online class, that that was all there was to discerning, discerning spirits. I assumed that if the Holy Spirit had something important to share with me, he would just show up and reveal it in a unique way, very dynamically. And I trusted that it was only dealing with people. Just as there is strong meat when learning about God's ways, there are deeper, deeper levels to the gift of discernment. It started in a particular year when the Holy Spirit begun revealing that some everyday objects like paintings or knickknacks, the things I had purchased, could be tainted by another spirit. Up until that point, I didn't even know that there was such a thing as defiled or cursed objects. Still in America today, there is a difference between defiled and cursed objects, which we will go into in this meeting. But first, we need to find it within the world, within the word of God. We see it within the Old Testament. And just because it starts there, it doesn't mean it still doesn't apply today. So let's look into the Old Testament. There was a story about a walled city called Jericho. It was the first city the Israelites came into when they were taking the promised land. In a miraculous display, God destroyed the, the city, the walls, the giant walls around the city without his people raising a sword. Afterwards, he instructed them about the contents of this particular city. Let's see that within the word of God today. In Joshua 6, 17, it says, And the city shall be accursed, even it and all that are there within. This is the American King James Version, that's AKJV. You see, the objects were cursed by God, and he told his people to keep away from them. A few verses later, he warned them about what would happen if they brought the objects into their camp, a cursed item. Joshua 6, 18. We're just going to go to the very next verse, and this is the King James Version. And you, in any wise, keep yourselves from the accursed things lest you make yourselves accursed when you take the accursed thing and make a camp of the whole camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. We see from these two verses, we can see that having a cursed object in our home may bring a curse into our very house, may allow the enemy to move in. In the case of God's people, it caused them to lose battle after battle, even when they, when, when they were greatly outnumbered by the enemy or when they greatly outnumbered the enemy. There were more Israelites 
They were used to winning battles. They kept losing. When circumstances show that everything is against us and loss comes instead of an expected victory, we need to do what Joshua did in this case. He sought the Lord and cried out and said, why is this happening? Just like Joshua did or God did with Joshua. If we seek him truly ready to hear whatever has allowed the enemy into our lives, he will reveal it to us. This is what happens when our prayer team has intercession appointments. The Holy Spirit reveals what is against people. We are able to plainly hear from the Holy Spirit what has gone wrong. In some cases, it may have to do with objects or or actions from ourselves or our ancestors. In the Bible story of Jericho, the trouble came from a man named Achan who had brought a garment, gold and silver into his tent. The objects brought a curse with them. The curse, a curse or a defiled item are not just limited to the Old Testament. I know you're thinking, the but, but what about Jesus? What about the cross? What about he said um, for the, the blood has paid for, paid for every curse? Well, let's look at this in the New Testament, what it says about cursed items. Here we see, In Jude 1, uh, chapter 1, verse 23, the King James Version. And save, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. So the Greek word spillo means defiled. Items and clothing can, can carry curses or be defiled with the flesh, meaning actions that are according to sin instead of according to God. This can cause them to be defiled. It says hating the defiled objects. That's different than a curse. So a newly saved Christian, newborn Christians may have objects contaminated by their own passions or spirits that they've given a place in their lives. So Jude is warning us here to be careful concerning these things. Until recently, I thought that being a Christian protected me in every way from any type of spirit that was not from God. It protected me from all curses, all items. I could do anything. I thought nothing could harm me because I was protected by Jesus and the blood that he shed on the cross. This scripture is proof that God expects us to hear from the Holy Spirit about physical things in this world. Just as God expects his people to stay away from the cursed items in the promised land. Now, in this world we live in, it's a fallen world. Most items will be contaminated to some degree or another. Because of the fallen world, there are very few holy or or people that are staying away from sin within this world. This doesn't mean we can't have anything in our home. It's only cursed items that may allow attacks from the enemy in our lives that we have to remove, other things can be redeemed by the blood of Jesus. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's take a look first at why spiritual influences can be transferred from somebody when they're acting in sin, in garments or other things they're using, and how, where that is in the, in the New Testament. Let's continue there. We're going to Acts 19, verse 12. It says this, So that from his body they were brought um, to the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the disease departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Here we're, this is a verse talking about Paul, and who, who would send stuff that was on his body, handkerchiefs, Um, aprons, things that he was wearing, he would send them to people and evil. And then when they laid these objects on people, then the demons or the sickness would, would be gone. You see, Paul, because he walked close with God and he was holy unto God, what he was, and he was, you know, worshiping God, he was anointed by God. And that that anointing that was on him when he was operating with God would seep into his garments even. And that the, the items that he was wearing would be anointed. So if we know and we believe that those items from Paul that he was wearing were anointed, 
why should not the opposite be true? If an item can hold an anointing from God, it can also hold defilement from the enemy because God is fair and just. And we talk about that in the free book, Why Doesn't God Speak to Me? So if you want to learn more about that, it's available on Amazon for free. You can download it from our website or you can even order it if you're within the United States in certain countries where we have them available. So Satan loves to, Im uh, to imitate God, to mimic him. In many cases, doing the same type of things with spirits in, in the spiritual world. But he does it with spirits that aren't aligned with God. The ultimate example of this is the what Christians call the anti-Christ. That is someone who will operate in miracles and have some things being done, but he's not giving credit to God. He's worshiping something else. That person is the opposite, the anti-Christ. So Satan loves to imitate God and he tries to do what God does because God is fair and just. If God can do it, then the enemy can often do things as well. So when there is sinful actions in a, in an, or on a, done with an object, sometimes that can cause them to be defiled. In fact, most items have some type of defilement upon them, either from those who were making them that may have been speaking curse words while they were doing it, or somebody who was using, who was doing, who was, um, doing something with it, like misrepresenting it, um, lying, you know, so there's all kinds of things that can defile an item that makes it not really holy. It's of the flesh. Sometimes it's even of the enemy, but praise God, we do have the blood of Jesus, which redeems us from sin. All we have to do is appropriate it. You see, it doesn't happen automatically. I'd assumed it would happen automatically. So all we have to do is when we purchase an item, we bring it into our home. Well, our home should be holy and dedicated to God because we are holy as he is holy. So we just take a few steps and it can take, it can keep us stay safe. Now, honestly, these steps should begin before, before you even bring it in to your house. Number one, you should ask the Holy Spirit if there is something you should buy. If you have any hesitation, any kind of, uh, maybe not, that's the Holy Spirit saying this may have a curse instead of being defiled and the curse might not be able to be lifted. It might be contaminated. And we'll talk about why it can be permanently defiled in a minute. Now, don't ever go into the store and ask, oh, Holy Spirit, show me, you know, if there's, so if this is not defiled, show me what I can buy here that is not defiled. Because everything, it will have some level of contamination usually. Then lastly, as you bring those items into your home, you bring them in with praise. You, you say, Jesus, I thank you for bringing these, providing these things for me. As they are mine, I thank you for cleansing them from all prior sin with your blood. Remove all contamination from them. I renounce any words, curse words spoken over them. And with the sword of the spirit, I sever all ties to the prior owners. You can learn more about this in the attacks uh, or in the class, where are attacks coming from? About the spiritual ties being a, the spiritual, um, severing spiritual ties. Our Lord has truly provided all that we need. It's just a matter of walking through this life with him, listening to the Holy Spirit for guidance, using that which he has given us. Remember, elsewhere in scripture, it says that you can eat even food sacrificed to other idols as long as you don't ask where it's coming from. And as long you know that by praying the and pleading the blood over that, receiving that through Jesus, that food is cleansed. So we know that if there's defilement even upon objects, that it can be cleansed through the blood of Jesus, through prayer. So let's continue on true uh, to talk about truly cursed items, like the items out of Jericho that Israel couldn't take into their homes or into their tent. And when Israel brought it into their camp, the whole camp was defiled. The whole 
body of, of God at that time, God's people lost battles. So let's take a look at that. There is a fine line of distinction between hearing from the Holy Spirit about what is good and what is evil and giving in to a religious spirit that isn't from God. We need to let the Holy Spirit guide each one of us. I'm saying this because newly initiated Christians, people new who are newly converted, baby Christians, they need, may need to grow a little more before they're ready to remove things from their life. So don't go around telling brand new Christians who don't know about the about these things. Don't be going and telling them you have to get rid of this and you have to get rid of this. You have to do that. No, that is not up to you. That's up to the Holy Spirit when they're ready to hear it. Then the Lord can bring him this truth. You just take care of your own life. The Holy Spirit will tell you what to get rid of. And mature Christians may have a much longer list than the newly born children of God. I was once a new baby Christian. When I came to God, I had a lot of things in my life that I wasn't prepared to recognize as bad. Even though my mom told me they were bad, <laughs> she told me these things and I just was like, whatever, Jeez, I'm with Jesus, he'll protect me, you know, and I just kind of dismissed everything. However, the Holy Spirit opened up a gift of discernment in my life. I began to see demons in my house on a weekly basis. Now I knew how to get rid of them, but they kept coming back. You know, every few days I would see another one. And I'm like, what is going on? It kind of, it's turned into this struggle, this battle. So if you are at that point where you're in a battle and the enemy keeps coming at you, well, then you may be ready to hear the basic items that could be allowing the enemy to access you. Just as I was finally ready after weeks of struggling. There are three basic categories for these items. Three. One, statues or pictures of other gods. Two, items from other religions that aren't Christianity. Three, things that access the spiritual realm. These items in these categories are cursed items. They cannot be cleansed by the blood of Jesus, just like those items from Jericho. I'm going to, let's examine these very closely, one by one, to see where the dangers lie. Exodus 20, 4, 20, verse 4, American King James Version. You shall not make to you any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven or above or the earth beneath, nor in the water under the earth. Now, this scripture was given to Israel when they were walking through the world at a time where people worshipped many different idols. These idols were often Im graven images that were of heaven above, the earth beneath, or, or something from the ocean. So here God is showing us where the danger lies. This verse, this verse follows the first of the Ten Commandments. You shall have no other gods before me. So God wanted his people to know that they could not make idols out of any objects or that they idols could be made easily out of other objects. Now, on certain items, you don't have to be bowing down and worshiping an item to give the enemy access. On certain types of items, just having these likenesses in your home, it's like a flashing light in the spiritual realm that says to, it says, other spirits are welcome here. So I'm going to give you a list, a short one of, of some of those types of objects. You see, because because by having a picture or statues of gods, of other gods, or you're making it known to the spiritual realm about your dedication, your level of devotion to God and his ways. You're saying, ah, I'm not all that firm on where I stand. In essence, it makes you look like an easy target. So the enemy will come in and test to see if you can get a place. I was just fortunate enough 
to have the Holy Spirit open my eyes so I could know when there was a demon prowling around. So as I said, any picture or statues of gods from any other re religion have to be removed because that's honoring them. That means statues of Buddha, statues of um, any kind of Greek god, um, including Hercules, um, any, anything like that, you want to get rid of them. Some lesser known items that are really gods include these. Dragons. Satan is called that old dragon in the Bible by keeping items that are depicting dragons. You are acknowledging the leader of God's enemies. I know, I used to think they were cool. I used to have some, but when I tossed them, well, then the demons stopped showing up. The other one is Kachina dolls. Now, if you, um, these are uh, first peoples, the Native Americans who were here first, it's, um, they're artistic dolls, but the carvings actually re represent the gods of their society. So you can't have that. No pictures, no dolls of them. And one that you may not be aware of is Cupid. Did you know Cupid is actually one of the Greek gods? No pictures of Cupid. There's even a danger of having angels. Because if you have a statue of an angel, how do you know which angel it's representing? You see, angels are spirit beings. Fallen angels are demons. When you have a statue of an angel, it could be an invitation to open up the spiritual connection for spiritual beings. Paul said this, and this is in the New Testament. So we're going to take a look at this today because I want you to see it in the word of God concerning angels. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they have, are of God, because many false prophets have gone into the wor world. Hereby know you the spirit of God. Every spirit that, spirit that confesses Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. If we continue going on, it says, and it is no wonder for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. Look at that. Satan doesn't always appear with horns, big fangs, and blackness. Satan can appear as many other things. I've even seen some of him or his minions appear and try and pass themselves off as God, Holy Spirit, or Jesus. So how do you know that picture of an angel is actually a good angel? You see, the scripture tells us to be holy unto God as he is holy. You should prayerfully consider that this means to remove all statues and pictures of spiritual beings from your home. As you begin coming up levels with God, you know, the enemy begins looking for more ways into your life. It can be tempting to focus sometimes on the powerful servants of God doing his will upon the earth instead of focusing on God alone. Let's see that in scripture today. Revelation 22, 8 and 9. This is a new King James Version. And what I heard and when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed these things to me. Then he said to me, see, you do not do it. For I am your fellow servant and of your brothers, the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings in the book. Worship God. We are to worship nothing but God. Even John, who wrote all the book of Revelation and several books in the New Testament, even he, when he was taken to heaven, was tempted to worship the powerful, mighty beings referred to as angels, the one that was escorting him. Let's not focus on the beauty and powerful of God's servants. Let's focus on God, not on his creation that could become an idol in our heart, or at the very least, put us in rebellion of God's ways. The next category we want to talk about, category number two, religious items. Just as Paul's clothing held that presence of God, if items were used to worship other gods, they may hold the presence of a spirit opposed to God. 
items from other religions or witchcraft symbols are something we should give up if we feel like there's a spiritual battle or negative circumstances constantly upon us. Bringing other religious practices into our lives is a danger we have to know that God says don't do. To be holy unto him as he is holy. We're to have nothing to do with other religions. Every time Israel's kings went astray and allowed the worship of other gods to be done in Israel, you know, under trees and uh, elsewhere, God eventually got tired of it and let Israel be conquered. This is God's way. We cannot let other ceremonies that are done in other religions, other religious items into our lives. You know, God, because of what Jesus has done, because we are now children of God, when our Lord Jesus rose from the dead, the veil in the temple separating the holies of holies where God's presence was and the rest of humanity, that was torn in two. The Lord told us that we are God's temple. The Holy Spirit now resides in us, not in a building somewhere. Just as the Holy Spirit used to be in the Jewish temple, it's not any longer. We have no need for special altars, special salt, any religious item, or even a particular place to worship. For we, we are his temple, and we worship him in spirit and in truth. Relying on anything else may open a door to a particular spirit. It's called a religious spirit, a spirit that wants to put us in bondage of we have to do things a particular way or we're not right. No, it's all about how much we trust in, rely on Jesus and what he has done. Now, a list of every dangerous religious item would be too long and impractical to itemize just ask yourself is this particular item used to honor a spirit that wasn't the god of abraham isaac and jacob if it is placing an honor at a physical location instead of focusing on the fact that you are his temple and and instead of knowing that he can speak to us anywhere and anytime then you may be led astray by another spirit and it may be opening that door wider for that spirit to come in okay the last category we're going to look at today spiritual realm items things connected to the spiritual realm let's begin with scripture for this one i think you're going to need a little bit of, of scriptural backing let's look here today to cast lots puts an end to disputes and decides between powerful contenders this is proverbs 18 18 there are many examples in the Old Testament where God, where God's people cast lots to discover his will. It was little objects that they would throw um, into a dish to decide what was what they would do. This is akin to flipping a coin to help us decide which way we should go. Israel expected God to guide them uh, with the manner in which these objects landed. Once we take Jesus as Lord, as we've stated, we receive the Holy Spirit. The Bible says he is our guide. He is our counselor, not a physical item. Remember, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of the Lord and the spirit of God. How disrespectful is it to trust in an item instead of trusting in him? We have been gifted the most precious gift, and that is the spirit of God inside of us. Now, the disciples did cast lots in the book of Acts, but this was before the Holy Spirit came upon them. After that, you don't see any more casting of lots. They prayed and they received direction from the Holy Spirit. Anything used to receive direction by chance or from a, the spirit realm, it's like an open doorway for that spirit to come into that area where it's located to come into your home. So items used to receive information from the spiritual realm include, but are not limited to, Ouija boards, tarot cards, American Indian dream catchers. You don't want a dream catcher. That they, they believe that this interacts in the spiritual realm. 
where dreams are located. Anything that is casting runes, anything used to predict the future by tossing it, or even reading tea leaves, if there's a cup or something that was used for this. This, this is just a small list to give you an idea. Investigate items. Was it used to contact the spiritual realm? If it was, it's a cursed item. Get rid of it. I want to also note, if you or your ancestors have participated in any of these activities, it may give the enemy, the, the enemy spirits who were active then, a place in your life. So you will need to renounce the actions of your ancestors and or your actions if you did it as well. Make that confession before God that it was wrong. Ask for the blood to blot out that sin and renounce those spirits as, as giving you guidance and advice. Now, these are just the basic principles concerning spiritual influences upon items. There is an advanced class later <laughs> that we may actually be doing at a later date, but it's still available um, in a written form within the free online classes. Every Christian needs to begin considering what they have in their home if they feel they're being hindered by the enemy. The biggest things are those idols, those objects that represent other gods and other spirits. You don't want a yin or yang symbol because that is uh, a spiritual belief connected to another god. You don't want these things in your home. That is the message I have for you today. That is the strong stuff. This is for those who are ready, who want to move forward with God, who want more of him in, his, in, in your life, who want to remove the hassles of the enemy. I hope you have learned something here today. We do have a couple of questions coming in. So let's go ahead and look at those now. Go ahead, uh, Jason, did you receive some questions? Yes, so the first question is online. Uh, the question is, what if it's true the gods are coming in the flesh reincarnation? I'm not sure, what, did, what can you read that question again? It says- Yeah, so it's like, it seems to be two part questions. I, um, the first one is, what if it's true the gods are coming? And then in the flesh reincarnation. So I guess it's asking mostly about reincarnation and things like that. Okay. According to the word of God, there is no reincarnation. There's never been a case of reincarnation. You know, in, in the person could be raised from the dead, but it's still that same person. So that is a spiritual belief from another religion worshiping another god and the, though that god's beliefs so you want nothing to do with that you it, that would be where you're not being holy unto god god said have no other gods besides me so if you are listening to information about reincarnation if you have stuff um dep depicting reincarnation that would be a cursed object next question my computer and my wife's computer has the face of a dragon on the front of the computer at the bottom. It's the emblem of the Asian company that made the computer case. Anyway, we were told by former elders of OCC to cover the picture with tape and we prayed over it and it would be okay. So my question is, is it okay? We have it covered. We don't have to get rid of the computers, do we? Yes. In that case, it's something that's vital to your work. It's not a picture and it's not just a you know a picture honoring that it's the name of the country it's our company it's or the or the style of computer and you have taken the necessary steps and um, what you do you can't plead the blood over it because it's a, a dragon you just uh, plead a bloodline around it um cover it up um so you're you're stating hey lord and this is your repentance you're saying lord i do not accept a dragon in my life i want nothing to do with that that old dragon so i'm just gonna Cover that up with tape and Lord, let your blood stand around this. Let nothing um, come through from the spiritual realm. Because if I could remove it off of here, I would. 
but I want nothing to do with dragons. Next question. Reading a horoscope or even using a super eight ball, these are not good practices either, correct? That is correct. All of those things are trying to get wisdom from someplace that is not God. Um, and those things could allow contamination into your life. There's a particular scripture, and I don't have it before me, but it's in the word of God that says, do not divine the future from the stars. So God specifically says, don't even look to the stars and try and divine the future. So don't be talking about um, horoscopes and letting the, the stars guide your life. It is God and the Holy Spirit who guides them. So confess, repent, plead the blood. Next question. And that means your astrological symbols as well for your months don't have anything to do with that. That is not from God. So, you know, all of the, you know, Aquarius, Sagittarius, whatever they are, all the other symbols don't have anything to do with that. that that's not from God. Let, let that let go, that, let go of that. Jason, anything else? Yes. Uh, so can you plead the blood on objects that someone else bought to you? That somebody else bought for you? Um, uh, yes. Brought, if it's brought, brought to you. Brought to you. Um, you have to own the object to ask the blood to redeem it from, from sin. So it has to be something that you um, own. If the person is there and it's their object, they can plead the blood over it. You can tell them how, you can show them why, but it's their object. If they ask you to plead, to join your, your faith with theirs, you can do it for them. I have done that on occasion um, for new Christians who didn't know anything about the blood. Other questions, Jason? Yes. Does this mean if our husband brought us jewelry or bought us jewelry with our birthstone, is that okay? What I would do is I would pray over it. And I would say, um, Heavenly Father, please forgive me for um, for focusing on uh, the connection of my birth to the, the time that I was born. And trying to, if you've ever derived any kind of information from that, like horoscopes, you know, it's usually connected to that thing. Then say, Lord, forgive me for looking to other places for wisdom. So you just pray over it. Confess that you have want nothing to do with that type of thing, horoscopes and, and, the, and the months and the stones. Then say, you know, Lord, forgive me for ever, ever placing trust or faith or focus on this thing. And I plead the blood over this sin. I plead the blood over this, this uh, gift the, from this jewelry. And Lord, I just ask that you cleanse it with your blood. This is a stone that you made and it's good. You made good things upon this earth. It's pretty. And I like it because it's pretty and my husband gave it to me. So cleanse it with your blood. And I renounce every word spoken over it about be, it being my birth stone. So that's how I would pray over that object. Next question, Jason. Yes. What if something belongs in the house to my husband or family member that I can't remove? You need to look at the class uh, bloodlines. Um, that's also in traps when praying and it's bloodlines, um, binding and pleading the blood or pleading the blood. I think pleading the blood binding and bloodlines is the class. So, and I think it's part two or three in, in um, traps when praying and so then you'll know what to do with those objects. But no, don't get rid of anything that doesn't belong to you. You have no authority. That's akin to stealing. So if it doesn't belong to you, you can't just start tossing things. Okay, Jason, next question. That's all that I have, Pastor Lynn. Okay. The short answer to that uh, question is you, you can place a bloodline around it, but you have to know how and why. You have to come into agreement with God concerning that object. And all that information is in that class on how to uh, properly uh, appropriate bloodlines. Okay, thank you all for joining us here, joining me here today um, for this Living Word episode. If you have more questions, put them in the comments and eventually I will come and answer them. <laughs> so if you see this later and you're like, what about this? Um, go ahead and put them in the comments and I'll be happy to help you. Um, as the Lord allows. Now let's pray as we end this meeting, uh, just place all this in the hands of the Lord. Lord Jesus, we just thank you for being with us here today. 
we have we thank you lord for the power of your blood we thank you that you have redeemed us from the curse of the law we thank you that you've paid for every sin we thank you for revealing the power available through what you've done and how to use it appropriately lord I just place everyone who listens to this message into your hands. Grant them wisdom. Reveal to them the right way to go. Reveal to them how to be free of influences that are not from you. Reveal to them your truth. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. Okay. Until we see you again. Shalom.